How do eruptions cool the planet? Did you know a mega hot eruption can lead to a temporarily cooler planet? The New York Times reports NASA is developing plans to study how eruptions cool the planet. The plan involves sending high altitude balloons into the air to observe a volcanic eruption event. When sulfur dioxide from an eruption mixes with airborne water vapor, the two create aerosols that reflect sunlight. In 1991, a volcanic eruption in the Philippines sent 20 million tons of sulfur dioxide into the planet's atmosphere. As a result, global temperatures cooled by one degree centigrade. Stick around for more cool facts about volcanoes. How did volcano hellfire do this to our planet? 700 million years ago, planet Earth went from this to this. Nobody knows exactly why, but new research from Harvard may hold the answer. Scientists suggest that sulfate aerosols, resulting from years of continual volcanic activity, may have led to the Earth becoming relatively frozen, or what's known as a snowball Earth. The research postulates that 10 years of eruptions from volcanoes, spanning 2,000 miles across an equatorial landmass, could have plied the stratosphere with just the right amount of sulfur dioxide to radically alter Earth's climate. Sulfur dioxide is very effective at reflecting solar radiation when it gets to the higher levels of the atmosphere. Once there, it can remain for up to a year. This, plus the location of the volcanoes along the equator, may have created an atmospheric barrier against the sun. The cooler climate would have then created more ice, which in turn would reflect more sunlight. The research theorizes this process continued until the ice reached present-day California's latitude. There, the freezing Earth would have become irreversible, and ice would have eventually covered all of Earth. Or in other words, the ice both literally and figuratively snowballed the planet. If Yellowstone blows, it's goodnight Vienna. A volcanic eruption at Yellowstone National Park would be an American natural disaster on a scale that the country has never seen. The event would potentially see millions of casualties and wipe out the West Coast, with its ash fall stretching far beyond U.S. borders. This would cause a volcanic winter, during which widespread starvation would be a threat. According to UN estimates, global food reserves could last only 74 days. Fortunately, the actual chances of that happening are 1 in 730,000, and America's top brains are on the case to stop it from even happening. To preempt such a catastrophe, NASA has developed a plan to drill underneath Yellowstone and pump its magma chamber full of water, extracting the heat. Cooling the magma rock would occur at a rate of one meter per year, meaning it could take thousands of years to eliminate the risk of eruption. The cost of NASA's plan is estimated to be 3.5 billion US dollars. However, the space agency expects the clean energy derived from heat extraction would offset this via lower power costs and the creation of geothermal plants. This plan only covers Yellowstone. It doesn't include the other half dozen supervolcanoes in the USA or the 20 others elsewhere on the planet. But experts say they rarely blow and Yellowstone only erupts every 600,000 years. And when was the last time it blew? Around 600,000 years ago, give or take a few millennia. The four main types of volcanoes. A volcano is an opening in the Earth's surface where molten rock can escape. The Earth's crust is made up of tectonic plates that shift and move. Volcanoes are often located at the fault lines between these plates. Cinder cone volcanoes occur when lava is ejected from a volcanic vent. Lava is shot into the air and pieces accumulate around the vent. This creates a circular or oval-shaped cone with a bowl-shaped crater at the top. Composite volcanoes contain a conduit system that channels magma to the surface. These volcanoes can have clusters of vents along the sides of the mountain where lava flows out. Shield volcanoes are large, broad volcanoes where lava pours out in thin layers, allowing it to travel farther down the shallow slopes. They build up slowly, with hundreds of eruptions creating many layers. Lava domes are created when small masses of thick lava can't flow far from the source, so domes pile up around the vent. The dome grows by expansion of lava from within, and the mountain forms from material spilling off the sides of the dome. The UN says the Pacific Ring of Fire is active. The Pacific has been rife with volcanic and seismic activity this week. After recent eruptions and earthquakes in the Philippines, Indonesia, Japan, and Alaska, the United Nations has warned the Ring of Fire is active. 
As the naming implies, it is a ring of hundreds of volcanoes spanning 25,000 miles across the Pacific Ocean. Much of it was created through the subduction of tectonic plates. This is where oceanic crust of the Earth clashes with heavier continental plates and is forced underneath them due to the weight. The resulting pressure is explosive and results in magma eruptions and earthquakes. Because of these subduction zones, the Ring of Fire is home to 452 volcanoes and around 90% of the world's earthquakes.